So Nico, tell me, what is your why? I mean, I actually don't really know. I, uh, I always play basketball. Um, I always loved the, the game and uh, it's been there ever since. So if I have to say a why, it's just because I love basketball. This is my why. So through all the things you've been through, ups and downs, as any athlete goes through, um, has it changed at all over the years, you know, with the level of success that you've reached? Uh, for sure, for sure, but it got, it got stronger. Um, as a kid, um, when I started playing, when I was six, of course, I would never imagine to have uh, uh, so many good experiences, also tough experiences. Uh, as a kid, you always dream just about, you know, dunking and scoring buzzer beaters or NBA. You know, when, when I was a kid, they were just uh, the cassette. There was no YouTube or internet or stuff like that. So for me, it was basically just NBA. And, um, you know, playing and having the career I had so far, I, I went through so many great experience, even tough ones, that made my love for basketball even stronger. As your love for the game <clears throat> has grown over the years, what kind of uh, obstacles did you face? What kind of challenges did you face uh, as a youth to get to where you are now? I honestly believe I didn't have, uh, I had a, a, a great path, but it wasn't easy because uh, I had to deal since I was uh, young with injuries. Uh, I broke my ACL when I was 17. That was my, that was my big mountain to climb. And, uh, you know, when you're young, uh, even sometimes after, you're a little bit cocky, a little bit arrogant. And uh, when I broke my ACL, I was just coming from probably my best game so far. And uh, in uh, one week, I went from being on the top of the mountain to the bottom of it because you know just you don't know what's that and then i got the surgery then the rehab and so probably the injuries were my biggest obstacles and uh, but as i said before that made my my love even stronger and made me tougher what is it that drives you to still be the player you are today i don't know it always uh, it always came it always came easy because i always I'm sorry to repeat myself, but I always loved the game. It was always, and is still always a joy to play, is, you know, I never felt this was a work, a job. Um, of course, uh, we, I, I'm getting paid as all the professional players, but to me, it's still the game I was playing when I was a kid. It's still, you know, joy and, and love. Yeah, as you mentioned earlier, you know, you started playing at six, um, but then at the age of 13, you sat the bench for, I shouldn't say sat the bench, sounds bad, but you were on the bench of, uh, forgive me for pronouncing wrong, Riganana? Uh, for, Rijana, yeah, Rijana. Yeah, you didn't play, but like, what was that experience like being, you know, pretty much just hitting puberty and being around these grown men, you know, experiencing that? It was, it was a crazy experience, because, uh, I've actually planned for that weekend, uh, I get away with some, uh, um, uh, with some friends and I had to, of course, change all my plans. And I remember when my uh, coach uh, of the youth program called me and said, Nick, you need to go with the first team, with the Serie A, the main team, uh, to Pesaro on Sunday, you're gonna be, you're gonna sit on the bench, you're probably not gonna play, but you're gonna be there. I was shaking, I was 13 years old. And so I, I passed the phone over to my father and he's like, hey, I think he's joking. Like, I need to go with the first team. And uh, it was actually true and it was uh, an incredible experience. And I almost, I almost played because we had uh, a lot of uh, foul troubles in that game. But uh, at the end, I didn't. But it was still, uh, you know, for a kid, it was amazing. It was an amazing experience for me. Uh, what kind of, what is exposure to your league uh, competition in, here in Milan? do for your development and your confidence overall? I mean, I, I believe when you play in Euroleague, you need to, you need to have a, a certain level of confidence. You know, we are playing against the best, uh, uh, some of the best athletes and the talents in, in basketball worldwide. So you need to be confident. Um, I don't know. I mean, 
uh, you need to have it, you, you know. And of course, situation will make it stronger or sometimes make it weaker. But if you want to compete at the highest level, you need to bring it every every night. Yeah, you mean you've after being in Milan for so long, <clears throat> you made a decision to go to Bamberg of all places in, in Germany. What, what, what was the decision like to do that? Um, I, I, I made that decision because uh, I, I made that decision because um, uh, back then when I was in Milan, I had, uh, let's say, uh, a, a different role than now. I was, uh, there's nothing wrong in being it, but I was a role player. And Bamberg uh, gave, me, gave me the chance to, you know, to be one of the main guy on the court. And uh, I, wanna, I wanted to, to you know, uh, take this kind of responsibility just to you know, try myself, to, to prove also to myself that I could be the guy. And uh, so, yeah, this, this was the, the reason why I chose Bamberg. And similar to Gigi, you end up getting a call for Fenerbahce to join that team. I mean, like your, your progression as a, as a professional, as an athlete, is just only on the uprise. What, would, what did that mean to get a call from such a historic and uh, powerful franchise? Uh, it was it was nice. I remember the moment. It was uh, it was after my second year in Bamberg, and it was in summer. And I actually had uh, an offer from an uh, uh, NBA team. The offer was on the table. I you know was pretty much uh, ready to to go and get it. But then I talked to um, Zeliko Bradovic, the coach of uh, Fenerbahce at the time. And actually, I was in some, I was in, on vacation with friends, middle of summer. After five minutes on the phone with him, I was ready to go on training camp right away. Boom, pack my stuff and go. And, you know, you play for certain feelings, for certain emotions. And uh, I felt those on that phone call. And uh, I, chose, uh, I chose to go to, to Fenerbahce. And uh, I'm actually very happy and proud that I made that decision because the two years I had then in Fenerbahce were two amazing years. Yeah, I mean, you know, speak a little bit about overcoming adversity. You know, in 18, you score 28 points, but you lose. Like, you gave everything you could, obviously, um, and still fell a little bit short. Speak to us a little bit about overcoming that and, you know, pushing to be better and, and you know, pushing your game to the next level, what that did for you. Well, I actually don't believe that scoring 28 points uh, means that you gave everything um, because uh, I actually believe that every time a big game comes, you give everything. This, uh, at, at least I do, or I try. Uh, I would say that that time I got a little bit lucky because uh, uh, it was a special game for sure. And probably so far, even though at the end of the game, you know, the, the feeling was bitter at the very least. Uh, it was probably the most special game I had in my career uh, for how I played, for um, the situation we were in, uh, for you know the goal we had there uh, and we were trying to reach. Um, you know, here in Europe, you don't play just one competition. You play two competitions. You play EuroLeague and then the national championship. And uh, so I overcome it with the group and, you know, focusing on the next goal. And it was to win uh, the Turkish, uh, the Turkish league. Um, it still, it still hurts when I think about it, of course, and it will hurt for uh, forever. But uh, as I said, the two years in Fenerbahce were two amazing years. And one of the reason why those two years were so special is also because of those final four. How did that impact you as a person, and how did that make you a better EuroLeague player? Because I mean, most most European players they go to the NBA, they come back, and they're just different. Not in a bad way, but they're like they're better in some some sense. Uh, speak to us a little bit about that that process for getting to the NBA, and also how that impacted you as a player and made you a better player today. Um, well, I don't know if I'm a better player today, but um, definitely uh, we say, we talk about confidence before. And if you have to have confidence in EuroLeague, you definitely need to have it in the NBA. Because there, in, like, in a split of a second, everything can change. It can be better, it can become better, but it can become worse. And to me, it was honestly a, um, a weird experience, I would say, because I played the first year and I didn't play the second year. Usually it's the opposite. Uh, but 
everything happens so fast. Uh, even first year, I wasn't playing at the beginning, and then I start playing. It was kind of out of the blue. But, I, you know, I was practicing, I was mm, staying ready, and uh, I was, you know, confident that I could play. I could, you know, be part of that group. And um, so if there is one thing NBA got me better is for sure about the confidence, about, you know, being ready and, you know, try to focus just on the very next goal. Yeah, I mean, let's speak a little bit about you coming back home and playing <clears throat> in Italy. Like, what was that decision like to, to come back? I mean, I'm sure you could have played anywhere else you wanted to in, in, in Europe or EuroLeague. What was it that made you make the decision to come back and play here? Um, uh, the decision wasn't, wasn't uh, I would say, it was easy, but not the easy. Uh, because um, uh, I, I've been already in Milan, and I always told myself, um, that I, I didn't want to repeat the experience, you know, but not just with Milan, with Bamber, Fenerbahce, you know, just, you know, even to try something else. And, you know, once you've done it somewhere, you're done. This was my idea. And so I was kind of, uh, you know, not sure if it was the right decision to come back. And then I talked to, to coach uh, Ettore Messina. He explained to me the project and um, they were actually um, ready, you know, to make a, a, a big decision on the roster to make space for me. And so that, that speaks louder than, than, than words, you know. And so I really realized there that, you know, they were really serious and the project was, you know, an ambitious um, project. And so I decided to come back and uh, it's been so far a good decision. Yeah, as a kid, did you grow up um, dreaming of a year league title? Was that? As a kid, did you grow up dreaming of a, like a Euroleague title? Yeah, because uh, I was playing in uh, I was playing in the youth program of Reggio Emilia or Reggiana, and uh, back in the days, uh, uh, Palacanestro Reggiana had uh, had a couple of great players, and they one year they they got to the semifinals, and it was a huge thing in the city, and so there I realized that I I wanted to do the same. I wanted to be a part of something like this, and uh, so far I've been lucky because I. I won the, the national championships in the three countries where I, where I played, so. You've had a chance to play for some of like, the most historic European coaches. Like, what, what has playing under them given you and provided you as a player, as a person? Well, actually, when you play for us, uh, you know, so, uh, such big uh, coaches, you don't think about their career. You know, you just focus on the day, on the daily basis. And um, you can tell why they are, you know, they became so big, they, why they are, you know, they had such great careers. And um, each of them gave me something, um, some more on the court, some off, more off the court, but uh, each of them uh, made me grow as a, as a person and as a, as a player. Talk a little bit about pedigree and legacy. I mean, your mom, as a silver medalist in 84 Olympics in LA, of course. Um, like, did you feel any pressure growing up, you know, with your mother being an Olympian and your father being an ex-hooper? Like, did that have any impact on you and the decisions you made as a child to be an athlete? Well, the decision of playing sport in my family was pretty easy. You know, it was, it's, it has been always part of our life. Uh, I felt no pressure at all uh, growing up growing up as a son of my mother. Um, but uh, I would love to finish my career in 2028 in the Olympics in Los Angeles. That will, that will be a super romantic way to finish a career. Um, I, I hope I can tie my mom with the result. That will be amazing. But um, yeah, I always say she's the champion of the of the family. I'm really proud to be uh, her son. Let's speak about that then. Um, little shifts, uh, the state of Italian basketball you know, on an international level. Um, obviously, you and Gigi both are attached to the national team, but what do you see in the future for Italian basketball? Well, actually, we need to first get rid of the actual captain of the team which is Gigi. No, I'm joking. No, uh, I think the future is bright. I think um, we have uh, now uh, a very good core of players. 
Um, and we are already a good mix between experience and, and young players. But we are also uh, great young kids growing up and uh, coming, you know, to be to be ready and play and bring some some new talent and some new athleticism. Um, so I think is 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 a bright future. I hope is a bright future, and I hope, as I said before, that I can be part of the national team for at least other five, six years. Yeah, unlike a lot of other uh, international stars, you, you actually had a chance to play for both the U.S. and Italy. Like, was that like a no-brainer for you? Was it just something that just happened? Or something that just, you know, how, how did that all come about? Well, whenever they ask me about it, I start joking, but uh, let, let's put it this way. I had more chances to play for the Italian National League than for the... No, it was never. It, it was never a thought for a simple reason. Because I, I, I born and grew up in Italy. I feel, and no disrespect to my mom or to her roots or my roots, I, I feel more connected with the Italian part. Um, but uh, it was never. It was never a thought. Um, I always, of course, admire the U.S. Uh, national team. But I always picture myself with the Italian national team jersey on. You're done playing in 2028 after the Olympics in LA. What do you want people to remember you by as a person, as a player? Um, this is a tough question. Um, for sure, I want to be remembered from my former teammates as a good teammate. That's for sure. Um, definitely from the young, youngest teammates as a, a good example, because uh, I, was, I wasn't so lucky with veterans. I, I met the right veterans a little bit later in my career. And uh, overall, I, I would like to be um, remembered as a, as a winner and as a person that gave everything he had on the court and off the court. Um, I believe the second part is something I can, I can control. The first one a little bit less, I mean, about the winning. Um, but yes, if I have to, you know, choose now, I, 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 I wish, I hope is, you know, these two definition can, you know, be the, the label I will have once I'm done with my career. I am Nicolo Melli and this is my why.